So thankful we found us a little spot up in the mountains to build us a little cabin. And it wasn't long after having that cabin that I knew I needed a storage shed. I went around pricing them and I thought, you know what, best thing to do is build your own. I had some old trusses and some leftover pieces, so I put one together. I had real uh, heart pine 1x12s and 1x3s on the cabin, and I wanted to cut some corners on a shed, so I used plywood and store-bought 1x3s. But I tried to maintain the, uh, you know, the same look so they matched. So I put the cedar up in the gables, tried to stain them the same color. The little storage shed was 8x8 eight eight with a porch that I could stack firewood on and it didn't take long to fill it up. I built another shed behind that one and decided, you know what, I think I'll turn this one into a tiny house. So the porch had to come off so I could put a proper floor on it and the door had to come off, the wall had to be moved out, the whole building had to be raised. Well, let me show you. Hey, 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 now I got something to work with. Now it's as small as I can get it, and I can raise it. Yep, cool. Now, let's start. The reason I wanted to raise it is because I decided I wanted to put a toilet in it, and the septic tank was above the, the floor. So I had to raise this thing tediously, one board at a time, very carefully. I cut the four corner posts and just raised it up until I had enough fall for the septic to work. I decided to use a wall mounted toilet so I could exit the sewage out the wall. That saved a little bit. This way I only had to raise it about six inches. So all these columns are free now and the posts just need to be concreted, but they're all secure. Okay, I got new posts set for the expanded floor. And boom, we're on our way. It's making sense to me now. Oh yeah. I love the way them windows are gonna open and close. Get a nice screen for them big openings. Man, that's gonna have a lot of light. It's gonna be awesome. All right, not bad. I guess next is framing for the door. putting together my own door casing. With the old porch gone and the new floor up, uh, I brought the wall out and now it's like eight by 10. I think it's looking pretty cool. Shed the tiny house coming along, really nice. This plywood isn't really made for outdoor siding, so I soaked it with a good oil-based stain slash sealer. It's starting to blend a little bit, but hey, here we go. All right, what's next? 
By this point, I opted for an outdoor kitchen, and so this is the boardwalk to get to it. All right, so this uh, rough concrete base will be perfect. And I'm probably going to use this uh, thin Carolina orchard stone for a top layer. Of course, the outdoor kitchen needed a floor. <laughs> it's really coming along nice. I'm very happy, very pleased with the progress. I think I'm gonna have a cool look there. So far, I like it. Pretty cool. Woohoo! <laughs> Well, that's pretty cool. I like it. This would be a nice outdoor kitchen. All right, now to find the water line so I can tap into it and put some water to the toilet and the outdoor kitchen. Certainly I'll need a light in there and a way for my guests to charge their phone. <laughs> A local salvage store had a good deal on insulation, so there we go. I love the cabiny feel and look that we get from uh, Tongue and Groove Whitewood. Who's it? Knock it. Ah, hey, Jan. Ellen. What do you think? Okay. You like it? Yeah. Cool. Stamp of approval? Yeah. But I do like it. It's looking good. Thank you. A local sawmill leaves a pile of this kind of lumber on the side of the road. Five bucks a board. Whoa. A friend of mine showed me how to use steel wool and vinegar to uh, stain the wood. I guess it just makes the, the vinegar makes the steel wool rust and turns it it's awesome. And I really like how it kind of gray blued out this board. Just made it look so aged and awesome. It'll look great when I put a cup of coats clear on it. Looking good, loving it. That just looks cool. It looks like a piece of black walnut. Very cool. Let that dry and put another coat on there and see what happens. Yep. There we go. I use this foam board to insulate the ceiling because uh, I wanted the trusses to keep being um, visible. I didn't want to cover them up. That stuff went in there right tight, perfect. All right, let's get her done. All right, I got the insulation on the ceiling, yay. All right, what's next is some small uh, nailers. 
some kind of piece of trim that'll go right in here. We chose a wall hung toilet because it drained out the wall instead of out the floor so I didn't have to raise the building as high. It saved about a foot of raising the building. Unfortunately, when it arrived in shipping, there was a part inside that was broke, so I couldn't install it right away. I covered the two inch foam in the ceiling with paneling. The reason I'm doing it this way is I wanted the trusses to remain exposed. Alrighty, now I have something to nail to, and I'm gonna put those uh, tongue and groove going straight up. Well, that's the look I'm going for. The space behind this tongue groove in these gable ends was kind of small and cut up, so I just used spray foam. Alrighty then, I got it. Yay! I think it's gonna be cool. Swiss Madison, the manufacturer of this wall hung toilet, sent me the replacement part free, no problems. I like this about the wall hung toilet. I can get right under there and work under it. <laughs> I'll poke a hole in the bottom of this tub and use it for a sink. So I drew a circle with a Sharpie. I drilled a few holes and cut the rest with my snips. <laughs> it even came with a little plug. How about that? Well, that worked real nice. With the floor in, it was time to build the wall that separates the bathroom. At this point, I'd say we have us a bathroom. All right, I finished the trim and I got this thing whooped. I added a wall for the outside kitchen. I'm thankful everything's working. Yay! <laughs> I suppose next week I'll do the painting and get this thing done. These inside gables, I used uh, old tongue and groove that I had, and uh, it had oil paint on it, so I'm using a bonding primer, so my regular paint will stick. I used the bonding primer on this electric box too, because it had a baked on enamel, and the sink was a galvanized bucket, <laughs> so I used it on that too. That plumbing pipe being three feet off the ground was a disaster waiting to happen. So I built a little wall and backfilled this and I'll keep backfilling it till I have that thing buried. Gave me a nice place to plant a few plants. Right, well, there's our finished product. I think they look good. That'll be a nice addition to the little tiny house. Well, I love it. I think it looks awesome. Really looks good. Very cool. That is awesome.
Well, I guess we're calling it a wrap. This little shed that's turned into a tiny house is ready for visitors. Teal. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Perfect. Well, this thing's finished, sort of. <laughs> little sheds, little uh, tiny houses, cabins, they always need work. They always need upgrading. They always need maintenance. So the work never ends, but it's worth it. I love the outdoor kitchen. We've got an electric uh, stove eye. We've got a propane cooker and a barbecue pit and a grill. So, you have a shed you're thinking about turning into a tiny house? Go for it. If we can do it, anyone can do it. Hey, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.